The Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge is back for FM21 and we're not in England this year. We're in Italy. So if you're unfamiliar with what a Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge is, basically a holiday to November 6th and you choose the team who are second bottom in the league and then you basically try and emulate his career at Manchester United. You promote youth, you try to hire former players as coach and stuff. You look to dominate domestically, compete in European competitions and that's basically it. You try and beat his career. What that means for us in terms of our save, there's only two ways this save ends. We either get sacked or we get to the Euro, uh, the Champions League final. But let's head on into the game and see who we've got. Let's check the Serie A table. Who is 19th? It is Genoa. So that will be the side that we end up taking over. Only three points after the first six games. Let, let me add my manager. We'll take over and we'll see what we're working with. So we've taken over Genoa. Three and a half star reputation is not too bad. The media prediction at the beginning of the season was 16th. So the performance a little under expectations. But it looks like the media predict us to be in and around the relegation conversation. A nice and big stadium. 37,000 capacity is absolutely fantastic. They've got excellent training facilities. Great youth facilities. And average youth recruitment. So youth we're going to have to really, really focus a lot of our finances on in terms of getting that up to spec. Apparently, this is our best 11 according to our coaching staff. A 4-3-1-2 looks to be the suggested formation, which is probably what I'm going to start with at least. And then it looks like we've got quite a few transfer obligations. Italy's weird. They're loan a lot of players and sign, basically delaying the transfer fee till the next season. So it looks better on the balance books. And this is the club vision for Genoa. Sign players from the lower levels of the domestic game. I absolutely hate this club culture. It's really not something I ever do. I'm, I'm not going to sit there scouting Serie B. Hoping for cheap talent. You know, I'm going to be going abroad. Play high tempo pressing football is something we kind of do naturally. Which is absolutely fine by me. In terms of the five year plan. Sign players to sell for a profit. That comes naturally. Sign young players to develop for profit. That is fine by me. Maximum one year contracts for players over the age of 30. It's not li unlikely to be anybody over the age of 30 in my squad. Work within wage budget we can absolutely do. And the board expects me to avoid relegation this season. So we need to quickly turn things around. If you've never managed in Italy before as well. They do have a non-EU player limit per season. If it's the same as FM20 which I'm assuming it is. You can only sign one new e U non-EU player per season unless you sell a non-EU player in which case then you can sign two which looks like we've got a lot of players out of contract by the end of the season some players who we probably could do with tying down to a new contract but a lot of players over the age of 30 who like Lassie Sean get get rid mate 40k per week the quicker we can get him off the wage bill the better so I'm going to try and negotiate this uh, club culture I really really want to get this off signing players from the lower levels of the domestic game doesn't look like they're going to play a ball. We'll try again next season if we're still here. So looking at the squad, a quick look. Looks like we've got some pretty high potential players, at least in terms of compared to the squad that we've got. Sisbora, a 21-year-old German, is currently on loan, but he's joining permanently. I've got no choice in the matter. At 21 years old, the left-back doesn't look too bad. Filippo Melagoni was an absolutely phenomenal player on FM years gone by. Maybe doesn't quite have the current ability. But at four and a half stars, he might improve rapidly if we do give him game time. Let's have a look to see who our assistant says as our best players. Luca Pellegrini on loan from uh, Juventus. We have extensive experience managing Luca Pellegrini. I believe we had him with Sheffield United on last year's Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge. And he's still absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately for us, he is just alone. And there's absolutely no clause in terms of signing them permanently. So that's great. Our best players are all loan players. David Zabacosta is, of course, on loan from Chelsea. An absolutely phenomenally well-rounded wing-back. And who is likely to be a main feature in our starting eleven. Mattia Perrin, goalkeeper. Three and a half star, four star on loan from Juventus. Stick with me through this first season. Because the summer transfer window, the next one, it's going to be interesting. 27 years old. He looks like a decent keeper for this sort of level. Marco Piaka, unknown from Juventus. Not quite as fast as I would like him to be as a winger. And it's unlikely I'm going to be playing wingers based on what I'm seeing from the squad so far. Is he the only one? I think everybody else is pretty much a wing back. A couple of old faces here. Milan Bedell, the defensive midfielder of AC Milan. No? Fiorentina? Always Fiorentina? Okay. Domenico Crescido, he was in Russia. Zenit, yes. To be quite frank with you boys, this squad... It's pretty dire, to be honest. 
Let's just set a formation. This was what was suggested by the coach and stuff. So I can have a look at the squad report and look at our squad depth. And Matai Destro is likely to be a key man in terms of getting us out of the hole we are currently in. Goran Pendev. Um, <laughs> he's 37 years old. It's not 2009 anymore, son. The squad looks poor. <laughs> it looks really poor. We've only got one goalkeeper apart from uh, the lone player. Yeah, there's definitely a huge amount of work needed. Left back looks beautiful. We are sorted for left back. Right back as well is looking like a position where we are well covered. Centre backs look pretty poor. Masiello, one of the best ones we've got. Absolutely dreadful pace and acceleration. We've already seen Domenico Crescito Barashi. Looks a little bit more well-rounded than the others and at 26 years old, worth 5 million quid. Could be someone who we end up investing some of our time into. Central midfield, why they want to play three central midfielders. They've got Stefano Sturaro, who used to be good. Ah, oh, It's just, looking at this squad, it's like looking back in the past in football manager and seeing players who used to have good potential, who now don't. In terms of transfers and stuff, we've actually got £6.95 million pounds I was not expecting that with 38k available in the wage budget. I'm hoping we can do some damage with that in the January transfer window. How we're looking financially, about £10 million in the overall balance. Italy is not a league that is flush with money. It's not like if we stay up, we are going to end up splashing the cash like you might in the Premier League. We are going to have to work at building a squad and then selling that and then building a better squad and then selling that. And then we could maybe be challenging at the top of Italy. Although the wage budget doesn't look too bad at £842,000. But for an established Serie A side like Genoa R, it is still a little bit low compared to what you'd be used to in England. We'll take a quick look at the season preview. as The media prediction was 17th in this season preview. Um, but pretty close to Verona and Udinese and Bologna. It looks like they tip all of the newly promoted sides in Benevento, Crotone and Spezia to get relegated. Uh, let's take a look at the league table, how it stands now. So, of course, we've only won one game from our first six, which was against Croton. Um, but we have then lost five, two of which were at home, one against Verona at home. That is a bad, bad result. Um, only six games in, though. So, still a lot of, lot of time to play for. Still 32 games to go. And if we can really start transforming this squad and be out of the relegation zone comfortably by the time we hit January, I'm pretty confident with the money that we've got available and the players that we've got. I'll be able to keep them up. That's the that's the very least. So I'm going to have a play about with the squad and stuff. We do have a game in two days' time um, against Inter Milan. We're in a Milan sitting top of the league. <laughs> welcome, Sam. Welcome. Uh, I'm just going to uh, quickly resign the manager that I started with. Just a holiday as well. So yeah, I will have a look at this squad. Figure out a tactic. Figure out, figure out a formation. And get to that Inter Milan game. This squad is absolutely massive. And it's absolutely trash. <laughs> we've got a lot of sorting out to do but we've got our first game against Inter Milan coming up and we've decided to go for it I mean why wouldn't we I always say on Football Manager the best form of defence is attack so let's just go and get smashed by Inter Milan we're going to start with this uh, Paleri in goal Birashi and Crescito in the defence they've got at least a little bit pace compared to the other centre halves we've got Zappacosta and Pellegrini we're going to be looking for massive things from them as the wing-backs, two of our best players alongside Milan Bedell, who will be playing in the deep lie and playmaker role in defensive midfield. Sturaro and Larega in the centre of midfield. Zahic, uh, Shomorodov and Piaka up top. Yeah, that's what we're going with. Let's get into the match and see how many Inter Milan can beat us by. Just a casual Lukaku, Martinez, Nangolan, Christian Eriksen, Hakimi, you know... No, nothing really to worry about. Our first game in Syria, Inter Milan come at us with a very similar formation. I think they're copying me, but more defensive. The bottle in this. I'm certainly hoping this isn't a highlight straight from kickoff, but I wouldn't be surprised. Come on, then, boys. We're in Italy. We've got our first highlight, and it's a penalty. <laughs> I mean, a corner for Inter Milan. We're going to check the penalty with VAR. I'm hoping it's a, it is a penalty. They have given the penalty. That is. Absolutely mm, perfect. Romelu Lukaku is going to step up for Inter Milan and he buries it. 12 minutes in, we find ourselves 1-0 down. It's not the most shocking thing. Another highlight now, 17 minutes in. Zappa Costa is dispossessed, running down that right-hand side and Inter Milan are going to counter-attack with Rajanine Golan playing the ball over the top. Martinez is in behind and Lautaro Martinez's uh, seventh goal of the season. 
puts us 2 0 down 18 minutes in. I'm maybe a little ambitious with the attack and tactic, but I'm going to stick with it. Um, things are not going great. Inter Milan are completely dominating the game, but uh, it's our first game in charge. We're figuring things out. We'll hopefully fix this by the time uh, you come back for the next episode. Another highlight now 35 minutes in, and Inter Milan are on the attack once again. We're getting the ball clear quite often. But we're not finding uh, our man when it happens. Hakimi finds Christian Eriksen. He switches the play to Matty Adamian on this left-hand side. He whips it in. Hakimi's there again. Come on, Hakimi. Let us off. We're used to manager. Lukaku whips it in. Martinez is there again. Paleri there, this time with the save. Oh, Marco Piak has pinched the ball high up the pitch. He's got options in the boxes. He's hit the post. Come on. <laughs> Please don't be like this. Yeah, I'm not too mad at this first half. I know we're 2 down, but our expected goals of 0.78 is actually higher than I thought it was going to be. But it looks like Inter Milan are going to get themselves one more chance before the end of the first half. Lukaku plays it in, Martinez is there, and at 3-0 we are sort of sinking without a trace. There is going to be a VAR check, and has it been given? It's been disallowed, 2-0. Right then, expected goals of 0.83 versus their 1.63. We're 2-0 down. It's not the end of the world. Let's just go out there, boys. Show me what you can do. And uh, I have fifth. First highlight of the second half. It's another corner for Inter Milan. And De Vries goes close for them. Oh, give me give me a highlight. I'd love a highlight. Barella with the corner for Inter Milan. He plays it in. Can we get a clear? We do. Sajic. Is this going to be uh, a little bit of a counter-attack? He's driving through the... F no, he's just taken down. Crescito will take the free kick. And he plays it out to Luca Pellegrini on this left-hand side with completely static in the final third. Not very many men making any moves whatsoever. Bedell receives the ball in defensive midfield. It's Giraro. He's got options on that right-hand side. I can see Zappa Costa in all sorts of space. And we do eventually get the ball out of him. He feeds it through. Oh, my God. It is beautiful football. Eldor Shomurodov. 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 He's third goal of the season. He brings us back to within one goal of Inter Milan. This will be completely undeserved if we were to get a point from this, but a lovely little through ball by Zappa Costa, and it is a good finish. We'll look to make ourselves some substitutions. We've got some uh, tired boys out there. We're going to keep Milan Bedell on. He's too good. Larega will look to get off. We'll bring on Casata in central midfield for him. Do we take off the goal scorer and bring on Mattia Destro? I think we do, and I think we'll keep our last sub just in case we have an injury late on. Come on, boys. We've brought it back to one. We win this ball and counter-attack. Oh, we do. Pellegrini finds Marco Piaka. I thought he was going to turn there and start to do the defence, but he goes back, but we do retain possession. Zappa Costa tries that little dink-through ball again. It doesn't work this time. Oh, no, the defenders missed the header. Lukaku is in behind. Can we win? Oh, good save by the keeper. So this is on the full game now. The full game's released, and oh, there's no dark skin. I can't believe it. We're stuck with this purple skin. I don't like it. Pellegrini to Milan Bedell. 15 minutes to go. If we could get a goal back here, we'd be absolutely genius. As Zappa Costa. Uh, not the greatest pass. Oh, it's Lukaku who's winning everything in the air. It was just a big kick up by Handanovic and Martinez is in behind. What was our goalkeeper doing there, though, is the interesting thing. He completely just vacated the goal and left an absolutely gaping gap at the back post. Let's see this again in the replay. Lukaku and Nangol and Combine, which is nice. And watch our keeper. What is he doing? What was he doing there? I had hopes, I had dreams when we got that one goal back. You never know, it's not over yet. 77 minutes in, there's a highlight straight from kickoff. And Zappa Costa, who's been our attacking outlet, even though <laughs> we've seen a couple of questionable passes, whips the ball in. Hunt. Oh my dears. I'm <laughs> I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this sort of thing yet on FM21. But now we see it. Handanovic own goal. Let's watch the replay together and just enjoy it. Zappa Costa with the back post cross. Handanovic heads it down. Barella boots it off Handanovic's head and it goes into the back of the net. In the Milan 3, Genoa 2. We're still in this. Let's go very attacking, boys. Final 10 minutes. Why wouldn't we? Oh, we're getting a man sent off. It's Barashi. It was sent a half. He has been sent off. We'll take off our attack midfielder. I don't think I've seen him once this game. We'll bring on uh, Eduardo Goldeniga at centre-back. Five minutes to go. We've went very attacking. There's not a lot more we can do. It is Inter Milan with a free kick. Bastoni heads over the bar. I was hoping we would counter. And there we are. Then our first game in charge 
against top of the league in Milan. I think we gave them a good game, to be quite honest with you, and I'm proud of our boys. Hopefully, once I've tinkered with the tactic a little bit and we get it working, um, we will wait and see what comes of that. But into three, Genoa two. It's a not a bad start, but Zappa Costa, thankfully, he's not injured for too long. So there we have it, boys. I'm not sure when we're going to come back for the next episode. I'll figure that out as I go along. Maybe I'll just play all the way through to just before the um, January transfer window. Napoli and Sampdoria two games before. And I know Sampdoria is the local derby. So maybe we'll bring them two games back. But if you're excited to see the series return for FM21, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.